Welcome back, brethren. We're excited to have you here. Uh, Master Craftsman Philosophy, uh, for now, section number three um, of the philosophy program. This section is going to dive into the sixth, seventh, and eighth degrees. Uh, so we're going to work through those. Um, of course, we're doing this degree by degree, so the sixth degree intimate secretary is now up on deck. We're excited to join you. Uh, this will be another short lecture. The next cut, these couple ones will be um, not near as long as some of the earlier ones, uh, nor near as long as some of the ones far after will be. But we're excited to have you here. Remember, Masonic education matters. Let's get started. Now, as we already noticed and noted, uh, we are in section three. Um, this is going to be quiz is um, seven, eight, nine. And we'll be specifically addressing uh, intimate secretary, provost and judge, and intendant of the building. So let's dive in right now to the sixth degree, intimate secretary or um, confidential secretary. This degree uh, involves Hiram, King of Tyre, and King Solomon having a, a bit of a tussle. Um, initially, to build Solomon's temple, there was a deal. Nothing's done for free, as, as I tell our candidates in the Valley of St. Louis. Um, and Solomon was going to pay uh, Hiram, King of Tyre, 20, the, the property, the land, a mass of basically a region with 20 cities for his assistance in building the temple. And this is, this is in the biblical text as well. Uh, but in the midst of this, Hiram is going to go visit Solomon. Um, he's making an early trip. And as such, uh, he heads off into town quickly and early, if you will, from Tyre, and goes to inspect these cities. Uh, Solomon isn't aware of this, but when he arrives in these cities, he finds them in ruins. He finds them run down. Uh, old ladies, widows, old men. Uh, they're going to be a, an expense more than a revenue creator for him. It's going to cost him more money to deal with them uh, than anything he would earn from them. Uh, he's pretty infuriated. He arrives at Solomon's court, um, confronts Solomon, and an interaction occurs uh, that involves another craftsman, uh, some accusations of eavesdropping. Uh, and in the end, we learn about the purposes of devoted disinterestedness zeal and fidelity so you're especially taught in this degree to be zealous and faithful to be disinterested and benevolent and to act as a peacemaker in the case of dissensions disputes quarrels among your brethren duty is the mag moral magnetism which controls and guides the true mason's course over the tumultuous seas of life whether the stars of honor reputation and reward do, do or do not shine in the light or the day of the darkness and the night of trouble adversity, the mason pushes forward to perform his duty, whether that performance be rewarded or unrewarded, is his sole care. And it doth doeth not matter, though, uh, of this performance, that there may be no witnesses. And though what he does, he will be forever unknown, perhaps all to mankind. Of course, in this degree, uh, we're told to be zealous and faithful and the other character involved, Zeba, demonstrates his zeal uh, to the kings by watching over Solomon, showing his zeal and faithfulness. Now, of course, we're not born for ourselves alone, but we're born to, to be uh, servants, both of mankind and the divine and, and in all our causes. And a little consideration, of course, will teach us that fame has other limits than mountains and oceans, and that he who places happiness in frequent repetition of his name may spend his life in propagating it without any danger of weeping for new worlds or the necessity of passing the Atlantic Sea. Yet it is therefore he who imagines the world to be filled with his, his actions and praises who shall um, subduct from the number of his economists all those who have placed in the flight of fame. We are not born for ourselves alone, and our country claims her share, and our friends their share of us. <clears throat> As all the earth produces is created for the use of man, so men are created for the sake of men, and they may mutually do good for one another. In this we ought to make nature our guide, and throw out into the public stock the officers 
of general utility by the reciprocation of duties, sometimes by receiving, sometimes by giving, and sometimes to cement human society by arts, industry, and resources. We should either be more severe to ourselves, perhaps, then, or less so to others, and consider that whatever good anyone can think or say, we can tell him of many unworthy and foolish and perhaps worse actions, any one of which, done by another, would be enough to destroy his or her reputation. Um, Pike here talks about the fact that perhaps we usually disparage others upon slight grounds and little instances, um, yet perhaps we should look in the mirror just a little bit. The true Mason, of course, is going to be disinterested and generous. It should be a, the uh, objection sufficient to exclude any man from our society if he is not disinterested and generous, both in his acts and his opinion of other men, in his construction, uh, construction uh, excuse me, and in his constructions of their conduct. He who is selfish and grasping or centrous and ungenerous will not long remain with the strict limits of honesty and duty, but will surely commit injustice. So Pike here talks about the fact that as members of this fraternity, we know we need to be disinterested and generous. We have to labor by that, and we can't let men in who perhaps would not be, or we know that would not be, or have that opinion, have that action. We need to make every endeavor to find those who would have good conduct, because he who is selfish or grasping um, or ungenerous will not long remain within the limits of honesty and truth, which we perpetuate, we truth, they're going to commit that injustice. Um, and they're going to be without our bounds, and we've brought someone through the West Gate that we shouldn't. And he continues to talk about those who maybe are habitually going to be harsh judges, and they'll del they won't delay off their unjust judgment. But yet a generous man is not going to be careful to return no more than he is to receive. He prefers the balance upon the ledgers of benefits which shall be in his favor. Uh, if he's received pay, full pay for his benefits and what is conferred, he will work equally to that. He's not going to spend more than he's received, if you will, in goodwill. Um, generosity, of course, and a liberal spirit make men to be humane and genial and open-hearted, frank and sincere, earnest in their doings, and contented and well-wishers to mankind. So as Masons, we have to practice those things. We have to be kind and affectionate to each other. Um, of course, there needs to be, as Pike talks about, more of the spirit of the ancient fellowship among us, more tenderness for our faults. Um, and if we do that, then um, there would be no shame in the use of the word brother. The generous man cannot but regret to see dissension and disputes among his brethren. Only the base, the ungenerous delight in that discord. Again, we're hearkening here back to the fact that a generous brother, a good-hearted brother, is not going to stand for that dissension. He's not going to appreciate it. He's not going to relish in it. He's going to want to work for our labor, for our betterment. Um, and Pike talks about this uh, the idea that it is the worst occupation we could have as men To labor to make men think worse of each other and to commonly the pulpit of a church or elsewhere uh, and newspapers included he says they do the duty of a mason is endeavor to make men think better of his neighbor instead of aggravating difficulties wherever there is strife and hatred among brethren there is no masonry for masonry is peace and brotherly love and concord Masonry is a great, the great peace society of the world. Wherever it exists, it struggles to prevent international difficulty and dispute to the blind republics, kingdoms, empires together. The great band, they bring them together in the great bands of peace and amity. It would not be too often a struggle in vain if Masons knew their power and value, their obligations. Pike here talks about the fact that if we actually practiced our values, if we actually worked beyond ourselves, to the, the efforts that we are supposed to be emulating, we wouldn't be in vain. We wouldn't be uh, just set aside, but we'd be pressing on and we'd be succeeding and we'd be stopping wars and we'd be stopping famines and all these terrible things. And by practicing these ideas of generosity and these ideas um, of affection and consideration and love 
and disinterestedness and zeal. We're going to uplift ourselves. And such are the lessons of this degree, which you vowed to make the rule, the law, and the guide of your life and conduct. Um, and if you do so, you're told you will be entitled because you're fitted to advance in masonry. And if you do not, if you do not live up to these, you advance too far already. Um, and and that, that line there that you've already gone too far comes up comes up time and time and time again in the ritual discussing the point uh, of consideration of do you really take these lessons seriously closing this discussion out again I said this would be a short one uh, I'd encourage you to flip to page um, 197 uh, and consider what benefits derive from a generous and liberal spirit to mankind um, and then of course if you go to section 14 to 20, which is going to be the next page, 198 um, to 199, what are four things that Pike tells us Mason should do uh, or should not do? Um, consider those, weigh those out um, as you go. So, my brothers, this concludes our, our brief discussion on the content concerned with um, the material regarding the degree of intimate secretary. We hope you enjoy it, and we look forward to you joining us down the road as we continue Master Craftsman Philosophy.